I was going to say, Jamie, I like your the most succinct feedback I think the mailing list has ever received. Those two bullet points it was uh, pretty, Good, pretty wonderful. Keep it nice and nice. <laughs> was that actually helpful? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Lee and I have just had a two and a half hour conversation off the back of the first bullet point, so <laughs> obviously shows you how you can expand uh, <laughs> from the detail. So no, they're very, very helpful. Yeah, which means that we've also got some fade lo-fi uh, sketches that I'll be using to talk through some things today um, off the back of what Nick, Nick and I were just talking about. Uh, okay, so hopefully you can uh, see my slides. Um, but I've got this one, facility is the return. Hopefully it will be returning and then going away because it will be done. Uh, will it be complete the discussion on this in this call and again any kind of minor bits of feedback um, so yeah so we had a really a, a really uh, I think useful productive discussion last time but felt that we had still hadn't quite got to level of agreement on some of the kind of the approach that, that we're taking um, uh, but that's what I want to use this call for just to kind of maybe recap some of that a little bit make sure that we are fo really focused on what we need to do to get this bit of the spec published focusing on the kind of key use cases um, uh, so we don't get kind of bogged down in things that we might want to do in the future or you know kind of extra requirements that aren't kind of critical to just just being able to start to publish and use some of this data um, so we're going to focus the majority of the call on that and then we'll see how we're doing for time whether there's um, other issues that we can um, dig into um, so I'm going to be jumping between um, some slides that I've got, uh, some JSON examples and some uh, quick sketches that I've just done on paper um, that hopefully help uh, breathe a bit of life into this and, and getting people feel comfortable that the model that we're proposing actually covers um, all of the requirements that we have um, and also is flexible enough that we can extend it in the future to cover some extra, uh, extra requirements. So um, to do that, um, I'm just gonna, we're gonna start off by recapping the use cases again. So, I mean, we've been talking about facilities for uh, quite a few months now. Um, we, and we started out by kind of focusing on the, the kind of use cases. So I wanted to kind of make sure that we recap them to, work, to use that as a test. Um, if it, really, if the, if the data model covers the use cases that we've identified, um, then we should feel comfortable about moving forward. Um, as we'll see in a minute, there's a few extra use cases that have come up since then. Um, some of which we can, I think we can encompass in spec with some small changes. Some others I think need further work, discussion, operation, but shouldn't hold us up um, uh, moving forward so that we can get some data published as soon as possible. So, um, so the key things that we need to be able to do around uh, facilities is we need to be able to publish opportunities to book a facility at a leisure centre. So being able to just broadly say you can uh, play tennis at Bath Leisure Centre, you can play badminton, you can play football and just give, give some in, high level indication of what um, opportunities are available for people to do that. Um, we need to be able to describe the slots that are available. So what, at what times of the day can people participate uh, in those activities, book those facilities, um, and indicate whether they're uh, currently available. We need to be able to do um, uh, pricing, either default pricing for using a slot or uh, slot specific pricing to cover uh, peak pricing for particular periods of the day. Um, and we also need to be able to provi um, provide that kind of information, that level of detail for individual facilities. So not just tennis at the leisure centre, but uh, a, a book an individual uh, tennis court. Um, I'm going to show a diagram in a minute, which might hopefully kind of put a bit of context to that. Um, so let me see if I can switch to that now. Um, can you see that diagram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. 
so sometimes pictures help. I thought it might help with some of the discussion, even though they're not very good, not very good pictures. Um, so, uh, so to give an example, um, so we've got, um, so say at Bath Leisure Centre, um, we can uh, book football pitches, we can book to play, uh, so within Bath Leisure Centre there's a sports hall. Uh, we can use that sports hall to play football uh, or we could use it to play badminton. Right, so there's different configurations of the sports hall. In one it's divided up into two football pitches, in another it's divided up into um, six courts. Right. So we've decided uh, early on that what we didn't want to do was describe all of those configurations because there's an awful lot of detail in those and we didn't want to put all of those business rules out. What we wanted to focus on is um, more a user-centered uh, approach, user-centered design. So focus on the products that people and the opportunities that are being presented to people rather than a description of how an individual hall could be divided up and used and all of the rules that go within that. So what the current data model is geared up to do is to support the description of those products. So we can, um, we can currently describe what we're calling a facility use. So there's a facility use uh, to play football in the sports hall. There is a, um, you can also uh, play badminton in the sports hall. Um, when we publish uh, that, those facility use as individual products, there'll be some structured data around it. So there's a terrible sketch in the bottom left there um, for showing bits of what we might include around a uh, badminton. So the facility use is for a particular activity, badminton. It's the, the product, we're gonna have a name, so it'll be badminton in the sports hall, for example. The location for where you'll be doing that would be in the sports hall. Um, so we're, we're saying specifically which bit of the, of the location uh, you'll be doing it in. Um, and then there'll be a, a, an array of slots, a list of information about when you can um, book to play badminton. Um, so information about slots will be the time period, but also will be um, indicating how many um, how, how many slots remain. Um, so this is uh, one of the changes that we plan to make to the spec is just changing how we uh, communicate um, uh, availability. Um, so that's kind of one uh, one use of the current model. Um, it fits well with this uh, kind of sports hall setup where the individual uh, configurations, the specific, you know, the specific badminton courts or the football pitches, they're, they're more uh, ephemeral things. They might be set up and teared down over time. They don't really have an identity beyond the fact that, you know, it, you might always be caught one in the left-hand corner of the, of the, um, of the hall. Right, so the really all, the only information we need to provide to people is you can there is an opportunity for you to play football in the sports hall at ten o'clock tomorrow, right? or there's uh, two uh, slots available at twelve o'clock. Right? So that's high level information. Um, the um, and the the way that we've defined the current facility use uh, model in 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 the draft covers that already. Um, there's a slightly different example, um, pictures, uh, it, it sketch isn't as, as, as good here, so my apologies. Um, but let, let's stick to an example where we, we're using Bath Leisure Centre. So I might be able to go and play tennis in my local leisure centre. Um, I might be able to go and uh, 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 play tennis, lawn tennis, or I might be able to go and do tennis on uh, on a hard court. Um, so here, the um, individual facilities are like a more permanent installations. You know, the courts. Sorry, Lee, I don't think your screen's updated. It might be with you doing a refresh or moving it around or something. Uh, bear with me. Try me share my desktop. How's that? That's better. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, let's see another bit. Okay. So, 
Yeah, so in the leisure centre, there may be uh, facilities for me to play on hard court, facilities for me to play lawn tennis. Right. So uh, drawing on the earlier example, uh, both of those things could be individual products, individual facility uses, because a, a, a user might just want to say, uh, where can I play lawn tennis locally? Right? And we want to just be able to show them that there's lawn tennis facilities in Bath Leisure Centre. So we can provide publish data on, at that level. So we can provide um, slots, offers um, at that kind of high level. So we don't have to go into any detail around exactly which tennis courts are available. We would just indicate how many were available at different, uh, different times of the day, just as I was talking through. But we do have a requirement to be able to provide information about individual facilities, individual courts, individual pitches, because we might want to provide um, more information on the, sur uh, the, the surface. We might want to provide images that give some pictures of the, those courts. Um, and it may be that people are, uh, uh, some people might actually be specifically want to be able to book a specific court. So we need to be able to communicate that uh, the availability at that level of granularity. So again, what we can do in, in the current draft data model is publish um, uh, information, is it publish uh, individual products for each of the courts. So here on the right hand side, I've got a facility use, which is lawn tennis on court one, there's a lawn tennis on court two, and each of those would have its own slots, its own offers and its location. But here it's the specific location is court one. Right, so I know exactly uh, where I'm going, whereas the at higher level uh, for lawn tennis, it would just be at the leisure centre. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think this, this uh, starts to address, um, so I think this covers the, the, the requirements we have and also the feedback that we had uh, from Jamie in that we've got a high level We've got a high level kind of more aggregated view of providing the availability and, and product information. So lawn tennis at leisure center, as well as a disaggregated view of, of the availability of individual courts. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there's a bit of fine tuning to be done on the current data model, but it actually encompasses this already uh, based on the kind of discussions that we've had in the past. Um, I'm going to switch to a different diagram, which kind of basically shows the same information, but in a kind of more, bit more of a kind of data model view. So you can maybe get your head around how it uh, uh, fits together. So I'll, I'll try and talk through it, starting from the, the top left. Um, so in the data model at the moment, we have the definition of place. So to use my previous example, we have the place would be Bath Leisure Center. Um, there are some specific uh, facility use products available at Bath Leisure Centre, one of which was lawn tennis, and that's on the bottom left right, uh, here. Um, so that, that would then, that facility use would have slots, so there's a line down to the bottom right to the slot, um, and each slot would have its time, the number of remaining uses, the maximum uses, which is useful in this context because we might want to be able to say actually there are six courts, six lawn tennis courts at, at Bath, so that's how we can include that in the maximum. And as the slots get booked up, we will reduce the number of remaining uses down to zero. Um, so that mechanism, um, those are new properties that we'll, we'll put into the data model. Um, it's a slight change to how we were planning to communicate availability, but it's consistent with what we're doing with events. Um, because uh, with events, we're talking about maximum attendee capacity and remaining attendee capacity. Okay, so continuing kind of around the, the circle, um, there's a line uh, which is labeled as individual facility use. So where we want to, we need to be able to provide a link from this kind of aggregated view, so lawn tennis through to lawn tennis on court, court one. So there's a relationship between these two products. So the, this individual facility use is a new type that we're going to put into the data model to make it clearer about when we're publishing data about a specific use of a fixed facility, like a court. 
um, but it'll have exactly the same information as we've just been talking about. So it will have um, it'll have a list of slots, uh, it'll have location um, uh, and offers associated with it. Um, what's the other thing? But what is different, as I, as I pointed out in the earlier diagram, is that there's different. Lo those are for different locations. The aggregated location. We're just talking about a product that's available in the leisure centre. So that's uh, the place. But for an individual facility use, uh, it, to make it clearer that we're talking about a specific court or a specific pitch, we'll associate that with a location, um, which will be a, uh, we'll use another schema.org type, which is a sports activity location, which is they've defined for exactly this purpose for describe, pointing to a pitch or a court or some uh, similar facility. Um, everybody, with me so far yeah yeah I mean, there, there might be a slight inconsistency there Lee I think there's a I think it should be an arrow between the bottom left and the top right facility use has a sports activity location uh, facility use has a location which is of type sport activity location well, oh, sorry. Just, no, it's just the, because it's the, it's the lawn tennis at Bath Leisure Centre so you would just say it's at the Leisure Centre oh got it yeah yeah Okay, so um, okay, so that's the kind of some of the conversation I've just been having with Nick, and hopefully, as I've talked through that, you can see that it that model addresses um, the, the the main use cases. Um, the first use case A is where we're talking about um, lawn tennis at Bath Leisure Centre or playing football in the sports hall. Um, we've got properties that will provide uh, availability, and availability information for individual slots. So we can say that how many remaining uses there are at a particular point in time. Um, I haven't shown the, the offers, uh, but I'll, I'll do that in a moment. But we'll, we, we can attach offers to the facility use to provide some default pricing, but we can also attach offers to individual slots so we can say, you know, at a peak time of the day, there is a different, um, a different price for, for, for that use. Um, and then uh, use case D, um, publish, uh, publish availability, those opportunities to use individual facility. So we could cover that as well. Okay, so that's, that's the core of what we, we were going to try and deliver around facilities. And I think we're kind of, we're kind of there, barring a few uh, changes. Um, so in the call, so in the course of doing some of the, the um, I think some of the implementation work that's been going on, and in some of the discussion last time, there were a few other uh, use cases that came up, right? a few other requirements, um, which we've not really dug into in a, in a lot of detail, but I kind of want to talk through a little bit now. Um, so one thing that came up, which people seem to generally think would be a useful thing, would be be able to publish the opening times of the facilities at a leisure centre. So this is def separate to the opening times for the leisure centre itself. So we need a way to do that. Um, again, there is um, there's already support for that in schema.org because it has a way to describe the opening hours of locations so that we, we can just attach that uh, that same information um, to our, um, our facilities and our products. So that's straightforward. There were two other requirements which um, uh, have been, we've mentioned, we've discussed, but I don't think we actually have a strong user need around it, um, particularly based on looking at how current booking systems are implemented. Um, so the first one was um, allowing users to book uh, longer slots. So it might be that the default slot uh, duration is half an hour and somebody might want to book it for a full hour. Right. So um, we discussed whether we wanted to have some way to describe that in the data model. Um, I'll show an example at the moment of how that could look. Um, but uh, broadly, um, this, is, this is somebody could do this because they could just like click both the slots and, and, and make a make a booking based on the two half an hour. It's, a, it's effectively a, uh, a multi-slot purchase, right? The, um, the, the kind of information is available to support it. But if I just switch over to my, 
another tab. I've got um, uh, it's a bit of example JSON that shows how this might look. Um, so the reason I'm kind of showing this is to show that I, I, w there is a way to support it within the current data model and the current schema.org markup. So it's there if people want to use it, but we don't necessarily have to rush to get it into the specification now because um, it doesn't look like mo actually this is a, a feature that people currently offer by default on booking systems. So, um, uh, uh, and the other point there was that we you can book uh, two. Sorry, Lee, that you, you can book two two courts next to each other, can't you? If you want to. Yeah, I was uh, going to come back to the adjacency stuff. Yeah. Oh right. Or no, I mean next to each other in time, so you can book. Yeah, yeah. Ten yeah. and eleven o'clock, uh, and then and and as one booking because we've got a shopping basket in the booking. Uh, you basically adding both to the order and then completing the order, so that it's all kind of. Yeah. So um, this. So let me just show this uh, JSON example. So this is using the same kind of, uh, same model that I was just talking about is that's currently in the spec. So it's a facility use. Um, this is in this example, it's table tennis at the leisure center. So it's using that high level uh, aggregated view I was talking about. Um, we have an array of events um, and these are of type slot. So we can distinguish them from any other events that are being published in data feeds. Um, the important thing for this particular use case is this uh, offers data, right? So the stuff that we're publishing at the moment has uh, a name, price, and currency. So it, in this case, it's going to cost you uh, uh, 15 quid for 30, uh, 11 a.m. Um, Schema.org has this notion of an add-on. Um, so one way, if we, if we wanted to move away, you know, streamline a little bit, um, what Nick was just describing of having somebody book two separate slots if they just want a full hour is to allow um, platforms to publish add-ons. Um, we've discussed add-ons in other contexts of like having add-ons of, of hiring equipment or, or, or um, other kind of things that people might want to be upsold to as part of doing booking. Um, so we could treat buying an extra 30 minutes, just like you know, buying an, a longer slot as an add-on, as an upsell, alongside those other things so here this this markup is just showing a, an upsell for an extra 30 minutes that might be at a slightly different price you know it might be slightly cheaper so that's how it could work um, so it we can fit it into the data model but at the moment i'm not sure that we've come across uh, data that kind of meets this you know meet the, the, sorry data that needs this kind of structure right so it's something that we can we can deal with but debating exactly how this should work shouldn't hold us up from kind of moving forward with delivering on the, the core requirements. Um, the other one that came up and we, we spent quite a lot of time debating was, was uh, around uh, booking adjacent courts. So this seems to be something that people do, you know, they want to go and play with their mates and they want to, to be playing on courts that are next to one another. Um, so at the moment, there's no way in the data model to describe that kind of uh, adjacency information. Um, but I think at the moment, we don't have a strong set of requirements that this is, this is something that um, is important enough that we need to get it into the data model right away. Right? I mean, because it only applies, I think reasonably it only applies to certain types of facilities and activities. Um, so it, it, it's not necessarily going to be a commonly used feature, but it's also worth highlighting that um, just because we don't have some way to describe adjacency in the data model doesn't mean that somebody couldn't implement an interface or provide a way for a user to do that. So just to kind of give an illustration here, uh, I'm trying to find the interface I found earlier. Um, there we go. My local pitch. So uh, this was uh, an example uh, like interface on the I think one of the lawn tennis sites, right? So here they're presenting the um, the slots for a section of for selection of courts. So there's four courts at a particular location, um, and I can see you know if I want to book an adjacent court, I can just do that as a multiple pur multi purchase. You know I could just choose to book uh, court one and court two, right? And and that. That information is already in the current data model. Um, there isn't, we don't uh, necessarily need to bend over backwards of trying to put a 
machine readable representation of adjacency or a, dealing with a kind of how much adjacent inventory might be available into into the model you know we're not we're not blocking people uh, implementing these kind of features or users from achieving what they want to do of playing next to their mates um, so that's kind of I guess a bit of feedback on kind of scoping has anyone got any any thoughts or comments on that any kind of strong positive or negative reactions to to that Uh, I think from our perspective, that looks uh, looks really good. Um, you know, Jason Courts, um, it would be good to uh, have that as as a draft spec if there is something there um, that we can look at and, and try to implement perhaps before it's um, uh, before it's been published into a kind of official uh, draft. Um, but I think uh, the rest of it looks really good for us. Okay, so what I would suggest then is that we um, we we move like discussion of that into a separate proposal, and we handle that as a you know as an improvement to the spec rather than us blocking kind of moving forward on the rest of it. Um, so we kind of you know we've we've captured the requirements, which I think is useful to do at this stage, but we don't have to have done all of the modelling work. Um, yeah. And, and so point F as well, um, uh, is that going into the, the, this first draft? Um, I, I don't think we're going to, I don't think I will put any wording in the spec around it. I think that we've, you know, we've got examples of just showing you how people could, could do it. We want to put pricing in around that, um, you know, uh, slightly longer. Um, yeah. Slightly longer. Uh, yeah, so to be clear on, on the kind of fun functional restriction, I suppose that the, there's nothing to stop us doing booking two consecutive slots for F with the model that as Lee's proposing, because yeah. you can just book 11, 10 and 11, add them to the same basket and complete the purchase. Yeah. You know, what it, do it does restrict is that you can't price a uh, two hour court different to a one hour court. But I know in our discussions, um, Jamie, we kind of said that of all the data we know about, it's always yeah. usually, you know, two hours is the same as one plus one hours yeah in price term. That, that's our experience for sure um uh, have facilities of 30 minutes sorry jamie you're, you're breaking up for me uh yeah, yeah. me too yeah are you low on power jamie Uh, sorry, what was that? You broke up. We didn't hear anything uh, since of that, that, what you just said since you started talking. <laughs> okay, nothing. Uh, is that better? Because I've turned my video off. Yeah, that's better, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I was saying that samples, facilities, the sound. Uh, no, we're still having a breakup. Uh, breakup. Uh, I may change my. Okay. Um, whilst Jamie may be reconnecting, has anyone else got any comments? Tom, are you happy with this outline? Yeah. No, that that all seems to make sense. I think these are. Uh, E, F, and G points are something that we can kind of look at at a later date, and I wouldn't say would be essential at this point to to get the majority of it. But yeah, I would say they're they're nice to haves rather than than essential at this point. So yeah, I'm happy with the spec completely. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, let me just. Uh, Hi, is that any better? Uh, it is so far. Let's see how we go. <laughs> oh no, can't hear you now. Immediately not, apparently. Um, um, if you
Sorry, Jamie. Oh. Um, Let me see if I can I can is, bridge him onto the call while you're uh, filling time there. Okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, Yavia and Shia, have you got any feedback on um, what I just um, talked through? I've got some of the JSON examples I can kind of show just to help reinforce things, but let me know if you've got yeah. any comments. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry if there's a lot of background noise. I'm just at a conference here, but I um, actually really like um, the JSONC, which is currently being shown. Um, and think that users, as, as you said, users can just select two slots if they want to book them adjacent and they shouldn't really be merged in any way. So, um, yeah, I think happy enough with that from our end. Okay, great. Great. Okay. Um, right. Whilst I'm waiting for Nick to uh, see if we can bring Jamie in, uh, perhaps I'll just show a few of these other examples. Um, I'll, I'm going to follow up after the call and provide links to the slides and examples. But for each of the each of the use cases, so the A A through F, um, I've got a little JSON example that shows how it would look in the current data model. So that's in the current draft. Um, there's a few amends that I need uh, need to put in, but I just kind of wanted, to, it was my way of working through and making sure that actually we covered everything. Um, so just to very briefly kind of step through these, um, here's a, a very simple faci uh, facility use example. So this is the kind of aggregated view. So it's uh, table tennis at the leisure center. Uh, the activity is table tennis. The location is the leisure center. Uh, and then we provide the array of slots, right? So that's, that's the kind of basic kind of uh, basic bits of the model. Um, uh, I not, you are not sharing your screen with us anymore. Uh, am I not? Well, I can't see it. Okay. Try again. Uh, just... Jamie, are you bridged on? Does that work? Uh, this should work better. Does this sound okay for the moment? Uh, okay, I was just going to uh, walk through a couple of examples, but maybe Jamie, you could give you opportunity to give your feedback first before I do that. I was uh, just talking about the uh, point around 30 and 60 minute slots. Mm -hmm. So often operators have the ability to set up both as it is, and they'll send us 30 minute slots and 60 minute slots starting at the same time. Okay. In general, and I'm talking about something that is and that will need to be considered in a lot more detail. So I think it's really easy for uh, an operator to send the 60 minutes slot as well as it would be good for that. That is just around the basket that we want to be uh, careful. Uh, we unfortunately, hang on one sec. Um, Jamie, if, if I call you on your mobile and you just talk on that device, we might get you crystal clear. If you, is that? Yeah. Try try that approach because we. We'll, <laughs> we'll get, this is an important message, whatever it is that you're sending. <laughs> but we'll hear it shortly. Right, Jamie, can you hear us now? No, I can't hear. No, Jamie, can you speak, Jamie? How's that? How? Oh, I think I can. Uh, if you can hear me, just move on. Yeah, okay. Uh, All right, who knows? It's a uh, huge important. I was kind of agreeing, uh, but talking about point F. Uh, in the context of the basket, which is probably off topic. Okay. I think part of what you were saying was around that some people provide slots of different durations, um, which could be included, I think at the moment could be included in that, that array, and because there's a way to differentiate between them because there are, we've got the duration property. Um, oh, I see, so we're saying one big array of, of different durations. Yeah, that, that, that'd be, that's the way that we'd have to kind of do it at, at the moment, I think. 
uh, unless you split it out as a separate facility use and you had a separate product for it, but I think that's probably um, less, less useful. Um, I just wanted to show, because we hadn't talked about it really much, is the, the kind of where the offers might work. Um, so we had the requirement, so this is C, uh, being able to publish default and slot specific pricing. So the way that um, I'm proposing that this would work would be that we can provide um, a set of default offers, um, which are is a, an array of offers that's associated with the facility use product. So here, a, a 30 minute hire is, is 10 quid. Um, but then for individual uh, slots, um, we can also provide offers. So for this uh, 11 o'clock slot, there's a separate array of offers uh, and a 30 minute hire is actually 15 quid rather than 10 quid. Um, so we'll, we'll end up documenting, um, uh, I think that's might actually going into the booking spec actually, because this is where it's most, most relevant, but um, the process by which a client will find the offer that is most applicable. Um, but broadly it will be, um, unless there's an offers array uh, associated with an individual slot, you would use the offers that are associated with the product. Right? So it's just a kind of simple override setup, uh, which I think is fairly simple to implement. So that gives us the kind of pricing uh, option to kind of uh, pricing in different, um, in different ways. Um, just actually one point on that. Um, so it seems that you have a, an absolute number for the price. Is there any way of having an offer of like 10% off? Um, so it's as a percentage of the price? Uh, I don't think that's something that, that we have support for. I mean, at the moment, we're largely using existing, um, uh, existing terms from schema.org. So I think I'd have to go away and have a look to see whether they inc incorporate that or whether, um, um, whether there's something, something new that we'll need to put in. Um, but I, I think that's part, that kind of uh, discount or variable pricing would, would be stuff that we probably need to consider as part of the, maybe as part of the booking. Uh, booking work um, because it's about there's a, there's a whole range of additional uh, rules and requirements I think around the the, the, the processing of offer data you know because okay. you want to find you're going to choose the client will have to choose you know offers that apply to the user it might be price age range specific pricing member non-member pricing it, offers might be available for a certain time period. Uh, and as well as other kind of pricing arrangements. That's a kind of whole separate uh, area. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. It might be good to encourage um, you to submit a proposal for that. Um, I can I can send you an email after with detail of where you put that. Um, I think that's a really good idea to propose into the modeling spec probably to start with. Yep, no problem. Uh, just drop me a line afterwards. Thanks. Cool. Um, the other example I was going to show was just an um, uh, example where you were just describing the facility use for an individual uh, individual court. Um, uh, this needs to change based on my early dis discussion. So we'll, we're going to be calling this an individual facility use so that you can, uh, a client can more easily distinguish between uh, these products that are about the use of an individual court or pitch versus those are that are for just use of a broader set of facilities at that aggregated level. Uh, but you can see we can start to do things like attach images of the individual uh, pitch. There's other properties that we could put in to describe, you know, surfaces, etc. cetera. Um, the, really the only difference here is uh, for the location, we're referring to a sports activity location. So the main tennis court, um, which is then contained in the leisure center. Could you, could you say again what's the difference between a facility use and individual facility use? Yeah, um, I'm, gonna go back to, I'm gonna go back to my... Uh... Sorry, I was talking in the JSON. Um, is there any difference? Could, is there any way to tell whether you are in um, an individual or... It will be, um, I need to change this example, but it will be a different ah. type. Right, so that it uh, for for an individual one, it will say type individual facility use, 
Okay, fair enough. Fine. Uh, cool. So, so it, when you're harvesting it in feed or you're fetching it from an API, you will be able to clearly clearly distinguish what your. your I, I thought it was going to be the same, and that was uh, I got a little bit confused. No, no, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, but other than the kind of uh, the chain having different type, uh, the structure of the product in terms of the JSON is going to be uh, very similar. It'll just be a different type. Um, and then a, some a, a slightly different information in the location because we'll, there'll be information about the, the individual facility, so the court, and then it'll say where that court is located. So in this case, it's in the, in the leisure center. Um, so Nick and I had a bit of a discussion about this earlier, um, about whether you know, the pros and cons of kind of doing it in this way. Um, but I think, um, again, this, this isn't about uh, the facility proposal per se. This is something that we're using exactly the same structure in describing event locations. So if we want to rethink that, we should be doing that as a kind of separate, separate proposal rather than kind of again uh, putting any blockers in our way of moving forward with this uh, specific um, changes to the spec. So I think I think that works for now, and then we can see what what we learn from implementation feedback. Um, so I think that is it in terms of like the examples that are worth highlighting now, um, because there's a few edits that I need to put into them. Um, I, I, I kind of I won't show the others yet, but um, really I think based on the the you know the the kind of reviewing the the analysis that we've done before, reviewing the feedback that we've had, um, there are only some relatively minor amends. Um, to the existing draft in order to move this forward. So the, those will be uh, defining a new, um, a new type called slot so that we can distinguish between um, these uh, basic calendar entries that are for booking uh, facilities from other types of event we're using it in, in the rest of the model for say gym classes will be adding this individual facility use to help us distinguish between this kind of aggregated and facility specific uh, product information. Um, we'll be uh, documenting how to use the hours available property from schema.org to publish opening hours information um, and then changing the way that we do uh, availability um, so that we um, uh, more closely match what we're doing with events. So we'll end up with remaining uses and maximum uses rather than using the event status property, which we've um, been using so far. So it's quite small changes and stuff that I can, I can um, put into the spec um, uh, pretty quickly. Um, so uh, if I positive feedback on that, on this call. So um, my proposed way forward will be to um, issue, I'll, I'll make the changes to the spec um, and circulate, so we've got an updated draft, circulated the, circulate the examples that match that draft, um, and I will do that um, tomorrow, since I've had time to actually do the changes, um, and just put out um, maybe for uh, a week, just give you all a chance to have a final look over those examples and just see if you have any last minute feedback so that we could then publish the updated spec by the end of this month. I, we've had, uh, I, I think, um, we've had quite a lot of opportunities for for, for review, but generally, it would, I think um, we're in a in a good spot. Does that um, sound okay to everyone in terms of timescales and next steps? Yeah. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Okay, um, and then I guess the uh, the other. The other actions are if, if um, Nick and she, if you're happy to start a proposal around um, uh, other kind of pricing, other approaches to pricing, um, and then we'll also make sure that there's a proposal in around uh, adjacent booking adjacent courts and longer slots, just so that we've captured those requirements, and then we can kind of dip into them as they as we prioritise them. Um, so if we if we go ahead with that, that means that the next call we have in a couple of weeks, um, we can start to focus on some of the other um, uh, some of the other proposals that have come in, kind of whilst we've been discussing facilities. Uh, there's quite a few other that, um, changes that people are requesting, 
Um, so what I'm going to suggest we do use that time for is to just look at those proposals and maybe agree uh, 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 some priorities about which ones to tackle. Um, one of the things that I'm keen for us to do is to make some changes to the specification to um, uh, be a bit more prescriptive around the way some, way some of the data is published to make it um, more consistent and easier to validate. Um, so we've got some work that's, um, that we've started around uh, creating a, a data validator tool um, that uh, would be good to get the spec updated in, in parallel uh, of delivering that. Um, we're going to be looking for some extra help to do some of the technical work on that. So there will be, um, I'll circulate to the list. Uh, we're going to be looking uh, to get just um, to get a developer or a, a couple of developers to help us out with some of that technical work. So if anyone wants to pitch you into that to, to create some open source code for the rest of the community, then um, that opportunity will be there. Um, so that's in terms of, I think, kind of next steps. Um, the only other thing to, to mention, whilst we've, we've actually got a few minutes left in the call, um, is uh, we're also going to be uh, putting up, uh, we've, got, we've been working on a new uh, developer site to, to place to put a bit more detail around uh, data model documentation, examples, a bit of guidance and tutorials. Um, it's still a work in progress, but if you want to take a look, it's at developer.openactive.io. Um, there's, there's still placeholder content in there, but um, if, you, if you take a look and you've got any feedback, then we'd be happy to hear it. You know, we want to work on this in the open, so it'd um, be good to know whether this, um, this approach to, uh, to documentation works for you. What we're one of the things we're trying to do is avoid having people jump, having to jump between our specifications and schema.org. So um, all of the documentation should be, in, all of the key documentation should be in one site, making it much easier for you to implement against. Um, so uh, I think that's it in terms of what I want to go through today. Um, has anyone got any other business or any other feedback or things that you think that we should be thinking about? Lee, can I ask a question here? What's happened to the activity list in terms of on this call? Because it was scheduled to have a chat about that, um, and it seems to have completely dropped off. Yeah, so so we um, so it hasn't dropped off the, the radar completely. Um, what we are doing is um, there are a few people that have ex in the community that expressed interest in um, moving forward with the activity list. So what we're going to do is schedule uh, a workshop similar to what we did with to kind of kickstart the, the booking work of actually getting people in a room um, because having a, a ability to have kind of face-to-face -face discussions and go through things in a bit more detail I think will help us progress that work. Um, the actual kind of technical side of, of, doc, of um, describing activity list is, is already in place. We, you know, we have the schema support to do that. What needs to be, what we need to bottom out is how we um, collaboratively maintain this list across the community, um, which is a slightly different kind of um, type of work that, that we've been doing. So we're going to get some people in the room to kind of discuss, discuss how that, uh, that will, um, how we move that forward. It will be an open invite, so anyone can come if they want to pitch in, um, and we'll be circulating kind of outputs from that, um, as we did with the booking work, to, to this mailing list and this group to kind of provide a feedback. Have some feedback. Does that sound okay to you? Was that maybe it was a yes? I think there was nodding. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's too many of these buttons on my um, microphone. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, another another notice as it is an AOB time. Uh, I might have mentioned this earlier, but just so everyone's on the call, um, everyone active will be implementing our um, the, the the where the specs at from this conversation when when Lee's written up and we've circulated that um, uh, Tom and and Played are going to do some quick updates to the uh, to Gladstone uh, adapter and then that's going to go into everyone active. So we should have the data from there published according to this spec. Um, we did a quick check earlier and it looks like um, basically everything that's currently being published um, is handled by the spec now we've got the two kind of connected so we should be able to bring them 
into line and have that published. It should be very exciting. So double our number of sites. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, as I was giving uh, general updates, um, uh, we are continuing to work on the, the booking um, specification. So the um, uh, the developer in the team, Chris Thorpe, who has um, basically finished an initial piece of work around the developer site, is now starting to work on the um, the editor's draft of the of the booking spec. Um, there's a few changes that we need to put in that to make sure that it's it's coherent enough to then uh, be able to bring it to this group and the rest of the community to start having a, a few more detailed technical questions around it. So that's happening in parallel. Just that you know, because we haven't been talking about it so much in this in these calls, doesn't mean that we haven't been doing some work on it. Um, so um, we can provide an update on that uh, next time as well. Cool. Um, anything else from from anyone? No. Uh, well, don't forget if you if you do have any questions in the meantime, then. Um, feel free to uh, get in touch with either Nick or myself or you know, uh, send an email to the mailing list so we can have a, a discussion. Um, if you've got changes, uh, proposed changes to the spec, um, there's a, um, you can go and file uh, proposals on GitHub. Um, we start to kind of put together a template around that to make sure that we're capturing enough detail so that we can start to have uh, productive conversations on GitHub, but also um, here in this group as well. So, great, thank you for all uh, coming along. I'm glad we've been able to kind of uh, move things forward this week. I'm excited to get this piece wrapped up. Hello. Uh, have a good week, have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys, good stuff. All right, yeah. cheers. Thanks, guys. All best.